Well, hello, this is Eline uh, from Brussels. Uh, we are now about to start uh, the very last, last part of the European AI Policy Conference. Uh, and this is the final keynote speech. Again, last but not least, certainly. Uh, I have the, the pleasure uh, to hear from yet uh, another uh, big name in the field. Uh, we have with us John uh, Gian Andrea, who is a Senior Vice President of Machine Learning and AI Strategy at Apple. And John is Apple's um, lead uh, for the Machine Learning and AI Strategy. Uh, you joined Apple in, in 2018 <coughs> and, and you report to Tim Cook. Uh, you're in charge of developing technologies like Siri, among uh, many other things. Uh, before joining Apple, you spent uh, a few years at Google. Uh, you led the machine intelligence uh, research and search teams. You also co-founded a few technology companies. And um, I was encouraged to mention that you're originally from Scotland. Uh, we are honored to be in your company today, John. You're one of the most uh, renowned experts in the field. Uh, and I understand you will tell us more about Apple's approach to machine learning and how this is infused with uh, privacy. John, thank you for being with us today. The floor is yours. Thank you, Eileen. Um, hello, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to start my day with you from California as you're wrapping up your conference in Europe. Um, since I have the privilege of giving today's last uh, keynote, I'll try and be brief and to the point. Um, I'd like to thank the Center for Data Innovation for inviting me to join you today and for all the work that you're doing to support and promote data-driven innovation. Um, by way of introduction, my name is John Jan Andrea. I oversee the strategy for artificial intelligence and machine learning across Apple, including the development of Siri, our intelligent voice assistant, and CoreML, our machine learning technologies designed for application developers. Uh, Apple fully shares the view of the European Commission and the European Parliament that artificial intelligence must be human-centric. And we have been at the forefront calling for stricter privacy protections we stand with the EU in prioritizing a privacy-preserving approach to AI as you work towards a policy framework for AI technologies. From the beginning, Apple has chosen a different path from others when it comes to our approach to AI and how we use and handle data to protect our customers' privacy. Our engineers put an enormous amount of thought into how we innovate while keeping privacy at the center of everything we create. We do not believe that a choice needs to be made between effective, innovative AI and our right to privacy. They can and must coexist. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. I know a lot of us engineers and policymakers use the term artificial intelligence in describing our work, but mostly what we're actually talking about is a specific technical approach called machine learning. Because what we're doing at the most basic level is training computers using examples. And that technique is really powerful because it's increasingly teaching machines to accomplish things that were impossible with conventional computer programming. At Apple, we take responsibility for everything that we make. Teams across the company come together to discuss and review how our products will be used, the ethics of technology, and the potential consequences of new features. And AI and machine learning is, is no different. Our engineers develop and deploy a broad range of machine learning techniques in many ways to build the best experiences for our customers and enable them to use our products in a seamless way. For example, we use machine learning to build state-of-the-art speech recognition, natural language processing for features like Siri, voice dictation, and language translation. And with the Apple Watch, we use on-device machine learning and advanced sensors to measure your heart rate while you're working out, capture an ECG, track your sleep, and even count how long you've washed your hands for, which in the current climate is a valuable feature for our users. Machine learning is also playing an increasingly important role in helping make our devices more accessible. For example, this year we introduced new recognition capabilities for users with visual impairments and for those who are hard of hearing. Voiceover technology can navigate and interact with more apps than ever before because we use machine learning to recognize UI controls and text in applications, making a much larger number of apps accessible to many more people. We take advantage of the microphones and iPhones and iPads and combine those with machine learning for sound recognition. That means that deaf users could be visually notified when their device hears a specific sound, like a doorbell or a fire alarm or a baby crying. And those are only a few examples. Much of the Apple experience today is shaped by machine learning. And I think within a decade, there won't be any Apple products and experiences that won't in some way be touched by this new technology. And as we get closer to that reality, questions arrive, both of policy 
and practice about whether or not we can train machines to enhance our intelligence without compromising privacy. We don't just believe we can do it at Apple, we are doing it today and we've been doing it from the beginning. And talk to you a little bit about our approach um, to, to machine learning at Apple. At Apple, we believe that privacy is a fundamental human right. We design our products from the ground up to protect our users' information. We prove time and again that great experiences do not have to come at the expense of privacy and security, and that machine learning does not equate with mass collection of data. In fact, when designing machine learning enabled features, we typically avoid collecting user data and often create or acquire our own data sets with strict privacy protections. The uh, privacy protections in place that remove all personal, personal identifiable information, and we have safeguards within Apple to ensure appropriate access to that data. I'll give you some specific examples of how we apply techniques that protect user privacy. So if we look at Siri, our intelligent assistant, it's been engineered to protect privacy from the very beginning. When you make a request to Siri, your device processes as much information as possible without sending it to Apple servers. When Apple does process or store the data on our servers, it's associated with a random identifier to keep track of the data while it's being processed. But those requests are not associated with your Apple ID, your phone number, or your email address. This data is used only to improve Siri. We do not use it to build a marketing profile, and we never share it or sell it. And this is a, an approach we think is uh, unique amongst digital assistants today. Second, Siri uses as little data as possible to deliver an accurate result. If you ask Siri a question about a sporting event, for example, we use your general location to provide a suitable result. But if you ask for directions to the nearest grocery store, more specific location data might be used. If you ask Siri to read your unread messages, Siri simply instructs your device to read aloud your messages. The content of your messages aren't transmitted to Siri servers because that's not necessary to fulfill the request. Recent advances in neural networks have enabled much more natural sounding text-to-speech synthesis. And Apple is leading the industry by running these models on device so that the plain text of your messages never has to leave your device. And starting with iOS 14, on our latest devices, voice dictation now runs entirely on device in several languages. And this keeps your most personal content private by design. With Touch ID and Face ID, we were able to create great user experiences that significantly enhance the security of your devices by making it easy to unlock your phone while at the same time keeping the mathematical model of a user's fingerprint or the digital representation of your face entirely and securely under your control on the device. As you can imagine, when designing a feature like Face ID, you need lots of data to train the machine learning model, and that includes images of people's faces. In fact, we used over a billion images to train the machine learning models for Face ID. But what sets us apart and is core to our approach to privacy is those images did not come from our users. We created our own data sets with high quality coverage of diverse populations uh, to not only reduce bias, but also to protect our users' privacy. We do the same for our Photos app, where we can recognize people, objects, and scenes using machine learning running on your device. This means a user's photo library never needs to leave the device in order to be analyzed. And this year, we enabled face recognition for HomeKit users. With smart cameras and video doorbells, you could be notified when somebody you know is at your front door. And all of this intelligence happens on your devices, and Apple does not have access to that data. The machine learning behind many of these features requires deep collaborations across and outside of the company. For example, for the ECG feature of Apple Watch, we worked closely with researchers at Stanford University School of Medicine to conduct the Apple Heart Study where over 400,000 Apple Watch users helped validate irregular heart rhythm measurements. This type of health data and others like it, like blood oxygen levels and heart rate, is obviously very sensitive information, and therefore it's stored in HealthKit, which is only kept locally on a user's device. For security, HealthKit data is encrypted when the device is locked, and the HealthKit data can only be accessed by authorized applications. We continue to innovate in privacy-preserving AI utilizing on-device machine, on machine learning. We're leading the way with other privacy-enhancing techniques like differential privacy and private federated learning, two techniques which together allow models to continue to improve while guaranteeing every user's individual privacy. Championing user privacy doesn't just apply to Apple's own products and features. We're committed to working with our large community of developers that create apps for the App Store to help them easily incorporate privacy-preserving machine learning technology into their applications. 
over the last few years, we've taken all of our foundational machine learning work and provided developers a complete stack of technologies and tools, enabling them to build experiences powered by on-device machine learning. This includes high-level application programming interfaces for things like sound classification and body pose estimation, as well as software development kits such as CoreML. CoreML is our framework for on-device machine learning. It brings the power of machine learning to all of our developers, not just machine learning experts. It gives developers amazingly fast on-device machine learning capabilities so they can make their apps intelligent while keeping user data private. Examples of European developers using this technology include Pixelmator from Lithuania, which uses our tools to enhance images in their award-winning photo editing app. DJ Pro, an application by a German developer, leverages our on-device CoreML API to allow DJs to remix elements from multiple music tracks in real time. We are proud of what makes us different, but we don't have we, we have no wish to stand alone. Apple actively shares our expertise with the research and developer communities. We publish our research regularly in peer-reviewed academic journals and on our machine learning research blog. We engage in a range of machine learning related topics, especially as they relate to privacy preserving machine learning. We're one of the founding members of the Partnership on AI, a forum for exchange between industry experts, bringing together organizations from across the world, including the Center for Data Innovation and many European partners like the Fraunhofer Institute. Of course, Apple is only one of many players in this space. But we take our responsibility seriously to secure our customers' trust, which hopefully is apparent from the examples I shared with you today. We also believe we have a responsibility to work together to set a high bar for the industry to deliver consistent standards and safeguards that everyone will benefit from, no matter which technology they're using. And at the end of the day, we all share the same goal of making technology safer, more accessible, and trustworthy for everyone. We view Europe as a champion for privacy-focused innovation in the global market, and we look forward to continued participation in this debate as policymakers consider how, to, how best to ensure that important values like privacy are secured in a future powered by AI. I'll close by echoing, echoing Tim Cook's words in his address to the 2018 International Conference uh, on Data Protection and Privacy Commissioners in Brussels. Tim said, in the pursuit of artificial intelligence, we should not sacrifice the humanity, creativity, and ingenuity that define human intelligence. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, John. It was great to, to hear you because it's it's rare to, to hear experts like you at, uh, at our events, as I mentioned before. So thank you so much for making the time to join us and for this insightful talk about how uh, AI uh, is being used at Apple and also mentioning a few things about what, you know, what can drive EU leadership uh, there. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so very much. Uh, and now to all our thank you, John. See you soon. And to our participants, we are now moving to the final session in a second uh, for closing remarks.